Hi guys and welcome to this introductory tutorial on calculating upper and lower bounds for rounded values. Okay, so an upper and a lower bound is simply just a limit which acts as a boundary for a set of possible values. So in a typical question, you will generally be asked to calculate the upper and lower bound for a value which has been estimated or rounded to some degree of accuracy. Alright, so let's have a look at this question. The length of a line is measured to be 70 centimetres to the nearest 10 centimetres. Calculate the upper and lower bound for the length of the line. So in this question, we're told that the length of the line is measured to be 70 centimetres. That means that 70 centimetres is the estimated or rounded value. In other words, there are several different values that the length of the line could have been before it was actually rounded either up to 70 centimetres or down to 70 centimetres. So how we're going to calculate the upper and the lower bound is we're going to figure out these set of possible values using a number line. We're then going to use these set of possible values to choose what the upper and the lower bound would then be. And here's how you do it. So you'd first of all start by drawing a number line where you would always put the estimated value right in the middle. Okay, so in this case, the estimated value is 70 centimeters. So we put it in the middle. We would then write the next number up and down from 70 centimeters. Now in the question, the length of the line is measured to the nearest 10 centimeters. So the next number up from 70 is going to be 80 measured to the nearest 10. And the next number down from 70 would be 60 measured to the nearest 10. Now let's use a number line to think of some possible values that it could have been before it was rounded to 70 centimeters. So it could have been 68.9, it could have been 67, it could have been 66, it could have even been 65. How about 64.3? Well, 64.3 would be rounded down to 60 to the nearest 10 centimeters. So this would be excluded from our set of possible values. Now let's look at some numbers greater than 70 that would be rounded down to 70 centimeters to the nearest 10. Well, 72 would be rounded down, 73 would also work. Even 74.9 recurring would also round down to 70 centimeters. However, 75 would round up to 80 centimeters. So 75 would actually be excluded from our set of possible values that would round to give us an estimated value of 70. So using this number line, we should be able to see that the range of possible values that the length of the line could have been before it was rounded to 70 to the nearest 10 centimeters falls within this highlighted region, excluding 75, because 75 would round up to 80 to the nearest 10 centimeters. Now the definition of the lower bound is the lowest possible number that the value could have been before it was rounded up to the estimated value. Now in this case, that would be 65. As any value below 65 would round down to 60 to the nearest 10 centimeters. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the upper bound? Now in theory, the highest possible value that would be rounded down to give us 70 centimeters to the nearest 10 centimeters is 74.9999999 and so on. However, as we're just looking at boundary points for a set of possible values, the value doesn't necessarily need to be included within the set of possible values. Therefore, we say that the upper bound would be equal to 75 centimeters, okay? Now, if we were to let X be the length of the line measured in centimeters, we can also express the set of possible values that would be rounded to give 70 centimeters in this case as an inequality as follows. This clearly shows that the set of values that the length of the line could have taken are all values which are greater than or equal to 65, which is our lower bound, but strictly less than 75, which is our upper bound. And we use this strict inequality to show that the value of the length of the line cannot be equal to 75, but would still be classed as an upper bound in this example. Another way to express this interval is called the error interval. 
Now, notice how the upper bound and the lower bound in this case are the midpoint of the next value down and the next value up. We're going to be using the same general idea for further questions. So let's look at a few more questions. So in this question, we're told that the mass of a bag of sweet potatoes is 27 kg to the nearest kg. Find the upper and lower bound for the mass. All right, so using the number line, we first need to write our estimated value in the middle of the number line. In this case, our estimated value is equal to 27. We then need to write the next number up and the next number down from our estimated value, in this case, to the nearest kg. Okay, so the next number up from 27 to nearest kg is 28, and the next number down from 27 to nearest kg is 26. Now, in order to calculate the upper and lower bound for this particular example, we simply need to find the midpoint between 26 and 27 and between 27 and 28. So the midpoint between 26 and 27 is 26.5 and the midpoint between 27 and 28 is 27.5. So the set of possible values would fall within this highlighted region. And so therefore, you should be able to see that the lower bound would be equal to 26.5 and the upper bound would be equal to 27.5. If we let x equal to the mass of potatoes in kg, then we can represent these set of possible values as an inequality as follows. So that represents all values greater than 26.5, which is our lower bound, but strictly less than 27.5, which is our upper bound. Okay, so in this question, we're told that the length of a field is 135 meters to the nearest five meters. Find the upper and lower bound for the length. All right, so using the number line, we first of all need to write the estimated value in the middle. In this case, it's equal to 135. We then need to put the next number up and down from the estimated value, which is in this case, 140 and 130. The reason is because we are now measuring to the nearest five meters. So the next number up from 135 to the nearest five meters is equal to 140. And the next number down to the nearest five meters is equal to 130. In order to calculate the upper and the lower bounds, we need to simply find the midpoints between 130 and 135 and 135 and 140, which are 132.5 and 137.5. We should then be able to see that the range of possible values that the length of the field could have been would fall within this particular region, excluding 137.5. So as a result, our lower bound will be equal to 132.5 and our upper bound will be equal to 137.5. So if we let x be equal to the length of a field measured in meters, then we can represent the set of possible values using the following inequality, or in other words, error interval, okay? Where the value of x can be all values greater than or equal to 132.5, which is the lower bound, but strictly less than 137.5 which is the upper bound. So let's look at some examples now where the degree of accuracy is a decimal number. All right, so here we're told to find the upper and lower bound of 7.5 centimeters measured to the nearest 0 0.1 centimeters. So again, using the number line where we place the estimated value in the middle, in this case, it's 7.5, the next number up and down from 7.5 would be 7.6 and 7.4 respectively. Now, if you're finding it hard to think of these numbers, just simply add the degree of accuracy to this estimated value to find 7.6 and subtract it to find 7.4. In order to calculate the upper bound and the lower bound, we need to find the midpoints between 7.4 and 7.5 and 7.5 and 7.6. That would give us 7.45 and 7.55. So 
the list of possible values that would have been rounded to give us 7.5 would fall within this highlighted region and therefore our lower bound would be equal to 7.45 and our upper bound would be equal to 7.55. So the inequality that satisfies the set of possible values or the error interval would be as follows. All values greater than or equal to 7.45 but strictly less than 7.55. Okay, so last question. Find the upper and lower bound of 4.8 centimeters measured to the nearest decimal place. All right, so as usual, we simply use a number line and place the estimated value, which in this case is 4.8 centimeters in the middle of the number line. We then write the next number up and down from 4.8 centimeters. But in this case, it's to the nearest decimal place. Now rounding to one decimal place is the same thing as rounding to a tenth or rounding to 0 0.1. So we can get the next number up and down by simply adding and subtracting 0 0.1 from 4.8, okay? So that gives us 4.9 and 4.7 respectively. In order to calculate the upper and lower bounds, we simply need to calculate the midpoints again so the midpoint between 4.7 and 4.8 and 4.8 and 4.9 give us 4.75 and 4.85. So we should now be able to see that the region of possible values that were estimated to be 4.8 centimeters would fall within this highlighted region. Of course, not including 4.85. And so therefore the lower bound would be equal to 4.75 and the upper bound would be equal to 4.85. As a result, our error interval would be as follows, where X represents all values which are strictly greater than or equal to 4.75, which is our lower bound and all values strictly less than 4.85, which is our upper bound. In the next video tutorial, we'll be going through more and more examples of calculating upper and lower bounds with decimal places and also significant figures. So keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.